Hi folks, welcome to my channel and the first of my Sketch With Me videos that I'll be posting every Friday here on this channel. I hope you've had a good week so far. If you're new to my channel, I'm Sarah and today I'm going to show you how to use value and contrast to create a realistic eye drawing. All the materials I'm gonna to use today I will list in the description box below, but don't worry if you haven't got exactly the things I have. Hopefully you can still gain something from the hints and tips that I'm gonna give you today. I also wanted to say that this is just the way I do things as well. It's not the only way, it may not even be the right way, but it might help if this is an area you find tricky. So when I'm talking about values, what do I mean? Well, value is the lightness or darkness of a color. And getting the right values can be as important, in my opinion, as getting an accurate sketch. And today, I am going to be showing you how I do that just using a black and white colored pencil. So the ones I'm using are the Faber-Castell Polychromos. I'm also going to be using a blending stamp and maybe a sharpener and that kind of thing. If you've also got an eraser that might come in handy if you want to draw along with me. Make sure you've got all those things before you start. But before I begin with the eye I just wanted to show you this um, quick sketch that I did out here. Now this just shows you the darkest darks that you can get with the black pencil and the lightest lights that you can get with the white pencil. And quite often what a lot of people will do, they'll be really good at getting the initial sketch in and getting all the details right and everything, but they'll find that their picture still doesn't look quite right and sometimes it's hard to see why. But uh, in a lot of cases it can just be because you haven't gone as dark with your darks or as light with your lights. Because a lot of people feel possibly not too confident with going as dark or as light as you need to. And their drawings will, or the colours in their drawings will range more in these mid-tones here. So it will lack the contrast that will really help your drawing to pop. So I've already drawn out the eye that I'm going to be working on today just on a small piece of paper if you do want me to go through how I actually get an accurate sketch down then perhaps um, let me know in the comments and we can do that on another video but being that I wanted to concentrate on the values and the contrast oops excuse me choking on the contrast today then I thought that I would just get that initial sketch down just lightly in pencil so the first step, step one, is to make an accurate outline sketch. As I said, that's what I've done very lightly in an H pencil on this grey paper. Now, I like to use the grey paper because it already acts as a bit of a head start because it provides the mid-tone in the drawing. So it kind of forces us to use those darkest darks and lightest lights and makes transitioning between them a lot easier. So I'm going to start off in my drawing with the black pencil and to begin with I am just going to put in the darkest darks. What I would say for step two once you've got your accurate sketch is to have a look at a reference picture or um, a photograph and study that for the darkest darks and lightest areas first because that can help you before you actually start to get a good idea of where you're going to go. And if you've got a reference picture that is in colour, it might be really clear, but sometimes it can be hard to convert those to sort of the black and white tones in your head. So it's quite a good idea to convert that picture into black and white. And then that will give you an idea of where you're going to go with it. So I'm just going to, for step three, put in the darkest darks and blend them out. I'm going to start off with the pupil. Now some people might feel more comfortable starting off with the lightest areas. It doesn't really matter, this is just the way that I do it. I'm just going to leave the highlights in the, air, the eyes, so the areas that are going to be um, white where we're going to have those little reflections because it can be quite hard to pull them out, especially if you're using a coloured pencil and not a graphite pencil can be hard to pull those out later. For 
the most part with colour pencil I would say don't press too hard too soon because once the colour is down it's very hard to lift up again if you change your mind or want to add in any highlights or anything. So for the most part I'd say with colour pencils it's best to use lots of light layers and if you apply lots of light layers it can be easier to lift them or erase them if you want to. And I might put this into a bit of a time lapse because as much as I want this to be uh, real time that you can follow along you don't want this video to run on too long otherwise <laughs> I don't know how long it will take but you might get a bit bored so I might zoom into a bit of time lapse while I just finish putting in these darkest areas and if you want to change the speed of the video you can always change it in settings on YouTube so I might just jump into that now and I'll come back to you when we're ready for the next step. Now I've got the darkest darks kind of mapped out I am going to go in and blend some of these and for this I'm using a paper blending stump but if you don't have one of these you can use tissue or kitchen roll or even anything like cotton buds whatever you've got at home but I'm just going to start blending these out a bit Now sometimes blending out will lighten up the darkest pencil strokes that you've made so this doesn't make for really smooth, um, a smooth look and a nice effect for your eyes certainly but you might need to go back and just put in some more darks after you've done this. But it kind of helps to get rid of the teeth of the paper and make it look less grainy so it's something that I do like to do. So we're actually using some of the pencil, moving it around to fill in some of those lighter areas as well. We don't want it to be as dark without having to actually apply any more pencil on your paper. So we can use what's on here to go into some of the lighter areas and help to kind of transition between the darks and the lights because it's the sort of going from the gradation that's the word I'm looking for going from the darks to the lights it's the gradation and and that that causes um, or gives you that nice illusion of depth to your drawings as well so being able to go smoothly from darks to light certainly in areas like for example this crease here so I usually start with a really dark line for the crease but in order to, for it not to look just like a dark line and for it to look like a fold in the skin I usually like to go on either side of that line and blend out a little bit so it helps it look like a crease and not just as I say not just a black line in the skin it gives it a bit more of a realistic look I think I'm being mindful as well that there are some little lighter areas up here so I don't want to completely cover that area under the lid there because we're going to go in with some white pencil and add those highlights in after we've done the darks. While we've still got some of the black coloured pencil on the end of our blending stamp or if you're using a tissue on your tissue, I'm just going to use that as well to <clears throat> go into put some shading into the white area of the eye.
because the white area isn't just white it looks more effective actually in some places especially out on this side of the eye as I'm looking at my reference picture it's actually quite grey and we can use some of that grey of the paper obviously but I'm just going to add a bit more depth by going darker into the corners there and trying to blend that across so you get a nice even gradient and that will help as I say with the depth I thought I'd do this eye study today because um, next week I'm going to be doing, I've done a portrait this week, but I am going to do another portrait next week because that's something I talked about on my plans for 2019 video. So I'm going to try and mix it up a little bit and do a few more new things. And portraits was one of the things that I thought I wanted to have a bit more of a go at. So for my video next Tuesday, I'm actually going to be doing a portrait of a female, rather famous female singer. So make sure you tune into that because that was a lot of fun, but it's using the same sort of techniques because I'll be doing it on the, the same paper. So the idea is if I kind of show you how I do or my method for doing things, then you'll understand a bit better what I'm doing in the following video. That's the plan anyway, we'll see how it goes. Also let me know if there's anything that you'd like me to do on this Friday session. So kind of a sketch with me, paint with me. I thought it'd be fun to have a go at some different things and if you've got any suggestions just drop them in the comments box as well. And I'm also going to be doing some eyes, I think, in watercolour, maybe next week. So that'll be fun. So again, in this corner, I'm just doing some more shading. Into that corner of the eye there. I actually did record this video yesterday as well and the eye did turn out all right but I forgot to turn the microphone on which wasn't very clever so I'm doing it again today. I'm not very good with technology. Okay so we're starting to get some shape to the eye. I think I might have to go in and do a bit more with a darker pencil underneath but we can come back to that. And I haven't forgotten we've got to do the eyebrow as well. That's another area where I usually do those at the end, eyebrows, once I've got all the shading in just to get those fine detailed hairs but we can do a little bit of colour underneath where they're going to go just so that we can get some of the, because they're not white underneath, hint at where they're going to go. I'm also not the fastest of workers in colour pencil as you might have figured out. Right, so I think that's a pretty good start. How are you doing with yours if you're doing it at home? You probably already finished by now and I'm still doing it. Okay. So we're starting to get the shape of the eye. And for the next step, I am going to add in some of the lightest lights with my white pencil. So I think we're on step four. 
So again, I'm gonna go in and put some white down, but I'm gonna try and blend it out so it's you get that nice gradient from one value to the next as well. So you've got your gradations and that helps build the depth, that's what I was saying earlier. So I'm just going in circular motions with my pencil and I do like to make sure my pencils are really nice and sharp as well. That's pretty sharp. I use the um, Derwent Super Point, I think it is. It's a mechanical sharpener. It's really good for getting a really good sharp point. But it does kind of eat through your pencils. I also use um, one of these things, which is just like a little sanding block with these that you can peel off. And that's really good if you just want to sharpen up the tip. Um, I use that for all sorts of things. But one of them is just getting back a fine point on your pencil. It's one of those things that you get in with a set of pencils and blenders and you don't always know what to use it for. So that's what I use it for. Same on the other side, but this side's a lot less white, so I'm not going to press as hard. Remember, you can vary the pressure you apply on your pencil, and doing that, you can get a lot of um, range of different values with that as well. But best to start off light and add more layers than go in and burnish. That's pressing hard really straight away. Um, because it's easier, as I said before, to lift up if you're using light layers than it is if you've really burnished and flattened the tooth of the paper. It also makes it harder to add further layers if you've burnished. Okay, so we've got some of that white in. You can see how it starts to, starts to add a nice contrast. I'm also gonna put in the reflection here. And see why it's important to leave that free of pencil because if you go in on top of the black you can end up with a bit of a grey kind of colour so you can add um, white gel pen as well that's really cool because it's like almost a paint so it works really well to go on top of areas if you have forgotten or you've lost your highlighted area so white gel pens are good for that And there's also some little highlight areas in here. I'm just going to try and put in now as well. And also along this bottom waterline, I think. Depends how much detail you want to put in because there are a lot of lines and you can see little sort of areas of light as well. So it almost look like little spots. But I'm not gonna put all those individually in now. <laughs> Don't panic. Um, <laughs> but you can go into as much detail as you like, but I didn't want to spend too long on it. Might as well be asleep before we get to the end. Oh, can you hear that? It's my rabbit playing with his ball. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Rabbit. He's someone you can't tell to be quiet because I'm doing a video. So you just have to go with it. He likes to be up all night. A bit like me. Okay, so hopefully you can see those lighter areas. I'm just going to put in a little bit more under here, I think. We can add some more in after we've done the eyelashes up there. I think we'll do that as well. Um, 
a little bit around the side. So that's some of the highlights put in. If we just go in now and blend those, the other thing you have to be careful of, if you've used your blending stump to blend your darkest areas, that's another thing I use this sanding block for because you can use that to clean off your um, blending stumps. Otherwise you'll transfer some of that. I mean, you can use it to your advantage as we sort of looked at earlier, but you can also use it to clean your stump off because you don't want to transfer any dark onto your nice highlighted areas that you just spent a while putting in. So I'm just going to try and blend those together and you can see it does give you a nice transition. How are we looking? So we blended out some of the whiter areas, we've put in the darkest areas and I think I think next we are just going to go back, add a few more details and blend them out. So I'm going to do a little bit more in time lapse now. So again if you want to follow along then do change the settings in YouTube if you just want to watch it in real time. Otherwise I'll be back for the next and final step. Okay, so I've put in some more of the black colour pencil, just not the darkest darks or the lightest lights even, but just to um, add a bit more of different value on certain areas and now I'm just blending these out again. So hopefully by the end of it we should have a nice range of values going from dark to light which will give this eye depth and contrast and it's the contrast that helps it make helps it make helps make it <laughs> I told you it was late look uh, 3D and more real so the last step is to just go and put in finishing touches and that is to put in the eyebrows and the eyelashes. You can also use a kneaded eraser to lift up any areas at this stage as well. And I might actually go in with a bit more of my white colour pencil just to add in some highlights to the lines under the eye before we call it finished. I noticed as well, looking at the reference picture, that there isn't really, at least in this eye, a defined sort of outline around the iris. Probably not as fuzzy as that, but it does tend to sort of blur from the white of the eye into the iris a little bit more than I'd done. So let me just give that a bit of a smudge and see how it turns out. highlight there, I might have to pull that back out. And another thing I do like to do as well um, with anything like this is to take a step back now and again and see how it's looking because when you're sort of working really close up to it um, it can be easy not to see or to miss things so it's sometimes good to have a little rest and have a a fresh look on it after a cup of tea or something. Okay, 
We haven't got much contrast in this bottom bit, but I think when we add those eyelashes in, we can get some of that back. Okay, a little bit more with a white pencil then, just to put in some highlights. Just putting a little bit of highlight underneath where the eyebrow will be. And I'm using the side of my pencil so I don't press too hard. If you hold it really back and on the side, you just get a really light pressure. And I'm just doing some sort of circular motions there just to get a light even coverage under that eyebrow. some more little details in there as well. Okay, let's put some eyebrows and eyelashes in. I think we're nearly... If you know whereabouts the eyebrows are going, it's fine. Um, but I would say, just be careful, don't be too heavy-handed too quickly, because they don't all go in the same direction. They're not all the same um, volume so you do get sparse areas within the eyebrow I'm not an expert at eyebrows but I know that it can be easy to put just like a whole line across the top that just look like slugs so <laughs> look at your reference picture and try and be mindful of the direction of the hairs the length of the hairs and that kind of thing areas where they're uh, thicker or darker eyebrows and so on and just build them up gradually uh, I'm gonna go and finish these eyebrows and I'll put it into time-lapse again because I've probably taken too long this is going to be a half hour video so we'll do our best Okay, so that's our eyebrows. Now we've just got to do some eyelashes and hopefully that will really help to make it pop. So the thing with eyelashes is we have already got some dark area here which is the reflection of some of those eyelashes and I have started to put some in over here when I did the darkest areas at the beginning. But with eyelashes, it will depend on quite a few different things and you'll need to check again with your reference picture or photograph because it will depend on whether the eye is male or female and it will depend on, say like this one is going to be a female eye because you can tell often from the shape of the eye but obviously the eyelashes, if they're wearing makeup, then they tend to clump together more. Um, or be more defined with male eyelashes. Not always though, but often they are um, shorter or lighter, less full, maybe a bit more sparse, but it will also depend on the age of your character, character, the person you're drawing. So um, yeah, that's something to bear in mind. and look close at your reference picture because the other thing about eyelashes is that they're not all kind of evenly spaced a bit like the eyebrows you get some that cross over you get some that point in different directions so you tend to get clumps in ladies eyelashes where they're wearing makeup for example so do just try and be aware of the direction that they're in and the length of them a bit like the eyebrows and also where they attach on the eyelid there so they kind of come from the eyelid and curl up and then sometimes you can see where they're coming out and up Some 
coming out into the white of the eye there on my reference picture my references I use by the way I usually go on pixabay.com because I find those really good they're copyright free images and I use those a lot for my Inktober references um, but you can type anything in and it's some really nice clear references and they're free as well so if you're stuck for where to look for images sometimes that's a good place to go but I like getting them up on my iPad because then you can zoom in and really kind of study the things that you're trying to draw and get all the details and stuff before you start so it's really useful you also get some little flyaway ones as well so we'll do a few of those but moving back onto this area where the main ones are again keep your pencil nice and sharp as well that's one of the reasons I've decided to use these um, Faber-Castell polychromos because um, they're not as soft as the Prismacolors because they're oil based but they do seem to be harder so they keep their point sharper for longer so that's why I thought I'd use them on this drawing today so I'm not constantly sharpening my pencil by the way this today isn't it that this is going out on Friday it's the last day to enter into my giveaway competition so I'll finish at midnight tonight if you want to be in with a chance of winning the watercolor original or the fox print then don't forget to subscribe and comment to the video I did last week where it's the 500 subscriber giveaway if you want to be in with a chance to win one of those things and also my um, Etsy shop has got free postage and packing for the entire month of January so if there's any prints that you like on there I'm going to try and update it as well possibly over the weekend to try and put some more things on there but um, if you want to take advantage of free postage and packaging head on over to Art Hive by Sarah, that's my Etsy shop. Okay, so we're just coming to the end here. Let's do some crossing over ones. Okay, bottom lid. Now these on the bottom lid are a lot uh, finer so there aren't as many of them and they do tend to be in clumps so whether that's the makeup again or not possibly you kind of got a little bit at the beginning where there's there's not many like the corner of the eye and then as you come down we've got a few more Lumps together. And I'm using more the tip of the pencil for these to get um, the value that I want. So looking at value today, so to get them as dark as I want, but also to get um, the precision. The pencil using it on the side is good for sort of going in with larger areas and shading and that kind of thing but I do like to use the point of the pencil for really fine detailed areas like the The final step is to just go in and do any last minute touches up any fine details, putting out any highlights and generally taking a step back and adding any bits that you think you need to so this is when we kind of look back at um, our reference picture and also make sure that we've got the darkest darks in and the lightest lights 
So I still think we could go darker in this crease. Here. But I should probably just do that again in time lapse because I'm famous for not being able to call a piece down. And this is just like a little test piece. So you can imagine what I'm like for larger pieces. <laughs> But I'm just going to finish this off and then I'll come back to you when we're done. So I think we are done with this eye study. I'm just going to go in with my white gel pen and just put out that little highlight in the centre there. And that one there, I think the others aren't too bad. You don't have to do this bit, but it can help to really push that contrast. So in any case, I hope you've enjoyed this video. It was a bit of a trial run today, so I'm sorry for any teething problems or any sound issues. Hopefully I will be able to get those sorted by next time. Remember, if you like this video, to give it a thumbs up, comment and subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon as well if you want to be notified of up and coming videos. So thanks for watching. I will see you next week. Take care and I'll see you then. Bye.